Well, hello everyone and welcome to 10 Ways to Improve Your LinkedIn Profile. Um, this is the 21st event in the LinkedIn Insights series and there's a, a slight change in the program this time around. So I hope you enjoy it. We're going to get through the main content within 30 minutes. So it's going to be fast paced. Uh, you're very welcome to pop things in the chat. I will also um, provide some other bits and bobs in there uh, throughout the presentation. So we're going to focus 10 ways to improve your LinkedIn profile. And unlike, oh, you need to put a photo on, um, I'm going to be going in a bit deeper than that. So it's going to be recent updates, some of the lesser known features, and some final tips, which are the you must always remember this is actually really important. So keep that in mind. If you want to try and keep pace, sign into your laptop or desktop on LinkedIn so that you can do the changes immediately. Um, and also, if you can open the app on your phone, I'll be showing you a couple of tricks there as well. So everybody who registers or attends, um, you get access to the latest offer. I'm running a live event here in Melbourne on Saturday from 9.30 to 1.30 with a maximum of four people. If you'd like to actually update your LinkedIn profile in person, you can do that this Saturday. And every time I run one of these webinars, I also show the number of people following me on social media. But the most exciting news for this particular webinar is I'm launching my very first online course. And it's literally how to go through the book and do everything with videos included. So it's opening today, 247 Australian dollars is the cost of the course. But if you register before midday tomorrow, the 15th of June, um, you get $50 off. And there is a money back guarantee if you do it and you don't get results. And there's also a $50 discount from my services if you take up that course. So here's my stats. Obviously, LinkedIn is my absolute favorite social media platform, but I am on plenty of the others. Um, I've got a lot of subscribers on my LinkedIn newsletter now. And I uh, recently unsubscribed 4,000 people from my email newsletter list because I don't know about you, but I'm unsubscribing for all my email newsletters, but some people still like them. So the people who are really dedicated resubscribe. So I've got 65 subscribers on there. So uh, my read rate went up to, I think, 70% of people read the newsletter with only 65% uh, 65 subscribers. So that was really interesting as well. I'm the author of five books. Um, the latest one was launched on the 23rd of January, 2023. And it's now a finalist in the Australian Career Book Award, which my previous one was also a finalist in the Australian Career Book Award. There's eight books in that. And I think, and uh, thank you, Melita, nice to see you. And uh, that will be announced in October. Uh, it's an initiative of the Royal Society of the Arts in London, uh, the Oceana version. And um, yeah, well done to the other people who've submitted career books uh, in that award. For those of you who don't know me, my career started at Westpac six days after my last year 12 secondary school exam. I worked there for 11 years in Adelaide before I moved to Melbourne. And that was in 1994. And I pretty much haven't had a real job since. So my first online enterprise was Newcomers Network. As a result of my moving experience, I set that up in 2001. I ran Camberwell Network for 10 years up until last year, which is something else I set up. And I'm a member of the Melbourne Press Club, the Career Development Association of Australia, Australian Society of Authors, Writers Victoria, Small Press Network, and Educate Plus, which is uh, people who specialise in advancement in private schools. So quick points. I'll let you read those. Um, yes, you can leave your camera off. There's heaps more on my website. It would be lovely if you could say thank you. This takes about 10 hours of work to bring this together and provide the recording and promote the event and so on and so forth. And this one was only promoted for one week. So it was a very last minute decision for me to go through. So if you want to know what we're going to be doing. Oh, hi, Mary Lou, uh, attending on behalf of Julie. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and you can share all the tips with Julie later as well. Um, so skills update, location update, demonstrate your transferable skills, career break, LinkedIn learning, LinkedIn app options, providing services, edit your headline and banner, social selling index and customize your LinkedIn URL. So you can probably see things there that are things you might not know about as well as things you may already know about. So just to get a bit of a feel for the audience here today, I'd love to know how long you've been on LinkedIn. Now, if you don't know, you can visit your own LinkedIn profile and click the more button. 
and you can see about this profile. It will tell you what year you joined LinkedIn. And you can also do that for anybody else's LinkedIn profile you visit. So if somebody feels like somebody just turned up in the last five minutes, you can click the more button and say, oh, they joined in 2023. There's something a bit suspicious here. But if they've been online a little bit longer, uh, that's interesting. You'll also see when they last updated their contact information and how long ago they updated their profile photo. So I call it bronze, silver or gold. So not to five years, you can pop a B in there or silver five to 10 years, or you can put the year. Melita was 2007, woohoo, I was 2003. Um, and uh, yeah, and if you're in Australia or overseas, I'd love to know that as well, just to get a bit of a feel. Um, I know Mary Lou is overseas. Uh, and most of the people are probably in Australia, but yeah, ask questions anytime. Naomi's in Australia, Haley, Shane's in Queensland, Catherine, uh, over 10 years. Well done, Catherine. And uh, we can call ourselves OGs, original gangsters. Um, I, I love that expression. <laughs> it's really cool. I know it's American, but I, I kind of like it. Alan's also in Melbourne, over 10 years. Well done, Alan. Yeah, it's amazing. Believe it or not, the statistics show that the highest proportion of people on LinkedIn are between, I think it's the ages of 25 and 39 or something or another. So it's actually a lot younger. Alice, uh, when she was in the UK 12 years ago, there you go. So we've got lots of people. Though I didn't want to stick to just real basics. I really wanted to, to dive deep into a couple of extra things. So one of the things that LinkedIn has been, 2020, 2010 for Julie, well done. Um so LinkedIn in the past, when it first launched, was basically an online resume. But I'm so excited that we're moving on LinkedIn to a skills focus because at the end of the day, it's not about where you worked and the, the label over the door. It's actually about the value you bring to an organisation. So whether you're coming in there as a business or you're coming in there as a worker, skills is what counts. Now you can list 50 skills on your LinkedIn profile and you can now add the top five skills to the about section of your LinkedIn profile. So yes, down the list, you can put them there. You can also add skills in the experience section for each of your jobs. You can add it in the education. So the course you were studying, what skills did that give you? In the licenses and certifications, I'm a member of the Career Development Association of Australia, so I can mention career development skills next to that membership, as well as the projects section. So many of you may not have filled in the projects section on your LinkedIn profile, but you can now add skills to each of these sections, as well as the top three, uh, sorry, um, top three will be at the top of the list, and the top five can go in the about section. So that's a little quick update for you to do. The next thing is your location update. So most of us, we fill in our LinkedIn profile and we kind of don't change it too much. Uh, Nazarene, yes, the mobile app is different. So please just wait till you go back to your computer and you'll be able to check it there. Uh, but you think it was 2005. Wow, that's a long time ago too. Um, so LinkedIn is always updating the platform and there are now additional sections for each component of LinkedIn. And in the experience section, when you say how you got your job and whether you're working full-time or part-time, these are options. But also now you can say on-site, hybrid and remote. And I'm super excited to be able to say I've been working on a hybrid basis for a very long time, well before COVID hit. So I think this is something good because it shows that I can work on a hybrid or remote basis over many, many years. So I think this is a really good thing to add to your LinkedIn profile. So I manually went through all my past jobs uh, last week when I was preparing these slides and updated that piece of information as well. You can also, if you scroll down to the skills section, there's this big blue button there now, which says demonstrate skills. So what you can actually do is you can do some little skill assessments. Now, they don't have skill assessments for everything, like they don't have skill assessment for uh, career development or conversational skills or something like that. A lot of most of the skills that you can demonstrate are IT based skills. But nevertheless, that could be within your toolkit of things that you can offer to either an employer or another enterprise 
So if you want to, you can have a look and see how you can demonstrate your skills. Because obviously the platform works on the basis that the more information you have available that people can visit without you even having to answer a question, the more likely you are to appear in search results. And I was on a webinar, I, I go to heaps of events every week since the year 2000. And I heard that LinkedIn is bringing artificial intelligence in to help us draft posts, to help us add content and to help us optimize our LinkedIn profiles, believe it or not. So I could be out of a job at this rate, uh, thanks to artificial intelligence, but I'm sure most of you would prefer to deal with me than a computer because, <laughs> my goodness, <laughs> you have to know what to tell the computer before you can get the computer to help you. All right, career break. This was an option that came out, I don't know, maybe one, two years ago. And instead of just adding a position to your LinkedIn profile, you can choose add a career break. And I, oh, thank you, Melita. AI is in everything. Yeah, can be helpful. Fantastic tool, but it doesn't quite beat us humans yet. Although I did watch a video this week that says it already has an IQ of 160, which was around what Albert Einstein was. And they're predicting it's going to get to a 1600 IQ within a month or 10 months or some crazy number because it can just do everything so much faster as you can well imagine. Anyway, IQ is an EQ. Yes, true. So career break. I investigated this and I wrote an article. I disagree with the career break option. I understand the value of being able to say, yes, I was relocating or I retired or I've gone to full-time parenting. But to me, it doesn't tell the whole story of a person. Like, let's say you were caregiving and you might think, oh, all I'm doing is helping them get dressed and cleaned and whatever, eat per day. But you organized all their appointments. You had to discuss specialists. You had to analyze information. You know, there's all this other stuff that you do. You might have also been studying part-time. You might have been doing a cooking course. You could have been doing all this other stuff, not just caregiving. I, I really dislike the concept of boxing people into something. So what I would do is if you weren't in a normal job, whatever that is, you can still add a position. And you can say your employer is various. And then you can add in as many of these different career break things that you're doing from date A to date B. And I think that's a much better way of describing yourself. It also gives you the ability to include a few more boxes. And yeah, I just think it's nicer. So if you want to use a career break, you can. Um, but I'm still one for, for choosing experience. If you want to see that article, just click on that link. Now, LinkedIn learning. Um, most of us have probably heard that micro credentials, small little short courses are becoming really valuable. And there's a group of universities here in Australia who've all been given approval to run micro credentials, particularly in the areas of skill shortages. And there's all these miniature type courses being created because we're short of nurses, we're short of childcare workers, we're short of teachers. So how can we get these people up to speed as quickly as possible? So you might not want to go down that path, but here in Australia, if you have an Australian library card, you can sign in with your library card membership into LinkedIn and get free access to all of the courses available on LinkedIn Learning. So if you haven't done any formal education for a little while, you can do these micro credentials. Now, they are very American, but they are very well produced. There's videos, there's instruction guides, uh, they're nice snapshotty things. As soon as you've completed them, they'll go into the licenses and certification section of your LinkedIn profile. It will automatically add 50. You might not want to add them all in, but you can also add them in education so that your education section looks more updated. You could also add them into your courses section if you prefer so that your entire LinkedIn profile has sections filled in. Now, on your mobile phone, so this one is specifically for you, Nazarene, whilst you're on your phone, you can go into the LinkedIn app and you can click on your face, your photograph, and behind that picture, you can add or change your profile photo, but you can also add in a video to introduce yourself to the world. But you can only do this via the phone app. So I wanted to sort of mention that to you. And you can also add an audio pronunciation of your name. So believe it or not, most people seem to pronounce my name Ellison. They put an I in there, which is very irritating. But at least if I've pronounced it, 
uh, then they have some way of making sure that they understand it and and they get to hear my voice. So I say Sue Wilson, independent LinkedIn specialist, you know. So I I pop in a little sort of spiel about what I do in there. You've got ten seconds to to introduce yourself, audio wise, which is also very good for people using assistive technology. Now. On this open to button on your LinkedIn profile, a lot of us, if we're looking for a job, may have filled in open to work. But there's another section called providing services. Now, the range of services is not as many as the different types of jobs that we might have done. But for any of us who provide some level of consulting, it is really worth filling in this page. We can actually add images. We can ask for reviews. If you want to see my services page, you can check it out there. You can um, have a little call to action. It's ideal for freelancers, consultants, and proactive job seekers. So you might say, look, I just need a job, but wouldn't it be better if you could get a job that paid really well rather than getting some average job that gets, you know, per hour rate? So if you might do hospitality over the weekend, but you are also an amazing videographer, you could put the video services in providing services. Somebody can't pay for a videographer full time, but you could definitely put it in your providing services. So really great for people doing side hustles, all that kind of thing. Your headline. Now, every career person, LinkedIn trainer, social media expert, whatever, they're all going to have a different formula for your LinkedIn profile headline. And mine is you start off with a label. Now, as I said, I don't like boxing people in, but if you meet me and you, I'm Sue Everything, you'll never refer me any clients. But if you remember me as a LinkedIn specialist, every time you see me in the news feed, hopefully when you need LinkedIn services, you'll think, come to me. So we start with a label. We then add in some keywords. So in the order of preference, whoops, sorry, um, that you want to be known for. So I just put a comma between those keywords. So this will increase my number of appearances in search results. And then something about me personally, if I run out of room, I leave that off. And I put in the little dancing lady because I don't want to look like a try hard, but I do want to look like I'm digitally competent. Uh, and I'm a woman of a certain age. And I don't want people to think I just want to retire and travel Australia in a caravan. Like that's not me. So uh, not that there's anything wrong with getting in a caravan and traveling around Australia, but I don't plan to ever retire. So I want people to know that I'm still active, doing things and so on. So that's my formula. And I recommend it for all of my clients. It's the hardest task to do sometimes because we don't want to give ourselves just one label and some of us have got lots of things I, I write poetry you know that's sort of buried in here about halfway but um, where I'm getting most of my income at the moment is where I focus those keywords the other thing is I do recommend for your photo it be less than three years old uh, particularly as we get older our appearance tends to change a little bit more frequently so make sure it's your head and shoulders your eyes on the one third line your head at the top of the circle and when you're wearing a nice high neck garment like I am today, what it does is it frames the face. So instead of looking at my neck, you're not, you're not distracted. You're more likely to look at my eyes. So that's why I wear high neck garments. Um, so if you want some more help on that, just follow those links. Now, many of you may not know about something called the Social Selling Index. So if you just click on this link, linkedin.com slash sales slash SSI, here is your social setting index. Now, I'm going to recommend a different index that LinkedIn create based on the data on profiles uh, to their product development team. So I'm hoping that comes up. This SSI ranking has been around for many, many years. Please do not take it as gospel and you're a terrible person if you're in the top 96%. Like, that's not going to matter. Um, but it's interesting. So you might want to Take a snapshot now, update your LinkedIn profile, change your activity around, see if it improves, and then, um, yeah, to see it as interest. Please do not think of it as, oh, my goodness, I'm an amazing whatever, because my SSI score is high. It's not like that, but it, it can be interesting reading. The next one is customizing your LinkedIn URL. Now, this is something I do in all my webinars. I tell people to do this. Nazarene, you can do this on your phone through the back end settings. I've got a video on LinkedIn, which show, sorry, on YouTube that shows you how to do this. 
it's got 35,000 views, <laughs> so it's worked. Uh, so please change your URL. So when you create a LinkedIn profile, you'll end up with a linkedin.com slash in slash first name dash last name dash numbers and letters. So that's the automatic one. But if you change it to your name, it looks better. It looks nicer on your resume, business card, website, whatever. And it also optimizes your name in Google search result. So if I'm considering you for an opportunity and I look for you online and there's no details there, then I'm going to be much more nervous about considering you for an opportunity. But LinkedIn is highly optimized for names. So this will search engine optimize your name in search results. Now, also on your own LinkedIn profile, where it says contact info in blue writing, you can add in your date of birth. Now, I'm an ex-banker, as I said, please remove your date of birth. Like I know nobody's going to say happy birthday to you, but it is part of your identity. And because cybersecurity and identity theft is such a big concern nowadays, I don't want you to have your date of birth. And I've told senior executives to remove it. And one of them didn't. And then his LinkedIn profile was audited by a consulting firm because he was being considered for a very senior executive role. And then they tracked me down and accused me of not telling him to change his date of birth. And I thought, you picked the wrong person because I would have told him to do that. You're like, that's always uh, a tip that I recommend to my clients. Take your date of birth off. So where to from here? If you have listened to this webinar and you do not do anything within 72 hours, you'll do nothing. So you will have had this lovely 30 minutes with me, but yeah, see if you can do something. Uh, three things would be fantastic because then I'll think, wow, that was worthwhile and you got some value from it. You can also check out all of the previous LinkedIn Insight webinars that I have hosted. My first one was my most popular and well attended because I know lots of people who are coaches and career specialists. So uh, there was lots of content that's useful for people in that type of role. And a lot of what I do is strategic. So feel free. You don't have to log in. You don't have to create an account. You can watch, see the slides. You can copy paste from them. You can watch the videos. Uh, it's all via that link there. As I said before, anybody who turns up, I will automatically email you these little digital files. My clients have all told me that this usernames and passwords spreadsheet has been the most useful thing I've taught them because most of us have a minimum of 70 passwords now. And if our password memory device fails or is compromised, then how do we find all of our passwords? So I've also printed up my passwords list and put it with my will because when I die, my goodness, somebody's going to have a long time closing off multiple accounts and at least I'll have a list that they can go on there. I do also list my bank account details on my spreadsheet, but not my bank account passwords. That's the only one I do not include on that. And I also password protect my uh, Excel spreadsheets so that it gives a little bit of extra security as well. As I said before, running a four-hour workshop on Saturday here in Melbourne, if you'd like to join me and uh, three other people, maximum of four. And you can keep up to date by following me on social media. Then there's my books on my website. And as I said, the online course, which goes through the book in its entirety. Uh, thank you, Venita. <laughs> uh, so much info to take on board. Yes, always is. Uh, lots of extra resources on my blog, my publications list, presentations, podcasts, radio and audio programs. I recently did a podcast, which I need to announce later today for school principals. Um, so I'll share that on social media later today. And the recording from this webinar will be there later today. Also, uh, if you want to follow me on social, you can just scan that code. It gives you all the links to my socials on my website. If you'd like to write a Google review, Facebook review, or just a review on my website, you can scan one of those. So I am now willing and able to answer any questions or show you anything you didn't quite understand. So feel free to raise your hand with the reaction button, uh, pop something in the chat or unmute, or if you've got a comment or something you'd like to say, 
Um, if you need to go, that's fine. Thank you for joining us. Uh, great to have you here. Um, I'd love to access the first of your 21 sessions. So yes, just go to the uh, LinkedIn Insights webinar page. So I'll we'll just go back here and grab the link for you. And it's on there. Whoops. So uh, do it. there. Okay. So let me just copy this link and pop it in there. And it's on the bottom of the list. Yeah, because they're all in date order. So you can just go to that link and it will be there. Now the comment, great session, says from Rita. Thank you. Um, another one, thank you from Ali. Need to run to a meeting. Yes, no worries. Uh, Julie says she always refers her career client, coaching clients to my newsletter to follow you. Yes, if you click the grey notification bell, that means you're much more likely to receive that person's content. Uh, so that is always really helpful as well. Um, so thank you for that. Any other questions? Well, I've got four minutes to spare. I, I really wanted to make this nice and fast and because uh, I found that people are enjoying short form content nowadays and so it's really good to be able to um, speed it up and get through things. The links and downloads on your LinkedIn page. So uh, which ones are you referring to there, Nasrin? Oh, thank you, Ali. We'll continue to promote my service. That's very nice. Thank you. Which ones, Nazrin, if you'd just like to unmute? Thank you, Catherine. See you later. The list of webinars. Okay, so the webinars were on that link I just put in the chat. So if you can just click on that link from the chat, um, then you can see all those previous webinars. Yeah. You'll see some of the same content in a lot of them. Uh, so that's why I've decided to change this new format so that I can dive deeper into specific aspects of LinkedIn at the time that the webinars are running because obviously lots of things change over time. The other thing that I've been playing around with that I'd love to briefly share with you in the moments left is I have been using Bing as my search engine. Now, a lot of people say, oh, no, you can't use Bing. Nobody uses Bing. but it has incorporated open artificial intelligence into the search queries. So just to give you an example, um, I'll just open up a new tab. Um, if I just type in my name into a Bing search query, what you will see is uh, my website appears first over here, there's a sponsored ad over here, but this is the Bing open AI chat service operating over here on the right. And it's automatically scraping information about me from, you know, artificial intelligence and all over the internet. Because I've had a, a presence online since 2001, there's plenty of stuff, there's other online content, blah, blah, blah. So just as in a Google search where you can search Google images, all these sorts of things, you can also do this little chat choice and you can put in artificial intelligence prompts right here in the Google search engine sorry, in the Bing search engine. Now, Google has Bard, which is their version of this. It's nowhere near as good as this Microsoft Bing version. So if you ask a question like, and this is, it's really good to do it on yourself. Who is Sue Alison, right? And you find out what the artificial intelligence knows about you via Bing. And it's really interesting and it, it comes up with a little narrative. So you can see it's still calculating and it's decided I'm an independent LinkedIn specialist, blah, blah, blah. And here it's producing all this information about me. So let's say you've got a meeting with somebody. You can type this in and say, who is Mary Smith? And then, yeah, who else? Um, okay, so now that I've written this, you've written five nonfiction books. Uh, what books? So awesome. And then off it goes, looking for it. So it's it's a much more engaging way to find information. So it's not just a search anymore. Um, it's almost like a, your own automatic chatbot uh, with the internet. And yeah, it's pretty exciting. So I am finding this 
a really interesting way to do stuff. It does end up limiting. You do need to be signed into Microsoft to make it work. They're obviously tracking down all the information that you use, just as Google does when we're signed in. Um, but I found that a really interesting little tool uh, to play with. So if any of you have started that AI journey, um, that's another little thing that is quite interesting. So I am going to turn off share screen so I can see your lovely faces. Um, again, thank you for joining me. Great to have you all here and nice to be able to reconnect with some fans and friends uh, from, from the past. Um, are there any other questions? Melita's tested being in it worked well. Yeah, I've, I'm really enjoying it, Melita. And as I said, I tried doing the same stuff on bar.google.com and I just didn't get anywhere near the quality of information that I got via Bing. So it's been really interesting. Um, thanks to um, Mary Lou or Julie, when you watch the recording, lovely to have you. I love Julie's seminars on uh, space and time and decluttering. I've watched lots of those uh, from Julie. She's a real wizard at and if you see that little sign on my door over there, that's a little focus board I did from one of Julie's workshops. Uh, so, yeah, really good. Thank you, Melita. Nice to see you. Bye for now. And any other final questions? Last chance. Oh, by the way, you can also contact me directly if you would like uh, to ask questions without being public. All good? All right. Well, thanks, everyone, and see you next time. Bye for now.